My name's Katie. I'm Sam. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Two Ghouls Podcast. There is no way that I'm not drunk. That I'm so, so scared. Like, and I'm really high. That's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> oh, just stop me with the fucking flashlight! <laughs> and die. That's how you would die. Definitely the worst ways, though. But they only want to shove you if you give them permission. And his rib cage was protruding from his skin. Oh my god. I'm like, hey, damn brother. <laughs> <laughs> that little sucker sunk his fangs <laughs> right into my hand here. Like, meow, meow, but... <laughs> Hey, meow. <laughs> What's going on? Hello, everyone. We're so excited Hi, everybody. that you're here. My name's Katie. This is Sam. This hey. is the Two Ghouls Podcast, if you're a new listener. Um, oh, well, before I forget, y'all know we have a Facebook group, and yes. you can join it, and it is so much fun. We do memes. Sometimes we'll oh, do yeah. live streams in there. Oh, the podcast is always live streamed there, so you'll never miss it. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a good time. You can post memes and meet some people. Hello, Morg Fairy. Welcome. Hi, uh, Spencer. Here. Piper's Piper. Here. Hi. Welcome. If you're you listening tonight, drop your name in the chat. We will shout you out. Where's um, David? Where's David? Where's, where's David? David? <laughs> where's the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm excited tonight. for today. I'm excited. I know. Oh, my God. I, I stayed up for a while yesterday making sure everything was concise and as i needed it we're going to be talking about weem spots museum which is the is correct me if wrong me if i'm correct <laughs> um mm -hmm. is it the most haunted in the eastern it's one of the most quoted haunted places in the u.s is what mm. i've heard that's the headlines mm. and it's literally i could walk there from my house <laughs> Yes, bitch. Which is kind of Radical scary. <laughs> oh, there's uh, that... David. He said, I'm here. <laughs> He's like, I'm here. <laughs> uh, and Edgar Allan Poe. So we're going to be going into some of Virginia's history. This is going to be like a new series on our channel where we, what did I name it? It was like America. All of America's America. haunted, haunted history. history in America. Mm -hmm. There it goes. I was like, we'll just do each state. However, yeah, the idea is to go through all that 50 us. states. Yeah. And if you guys have one that you want to hear before the rest, drop it in the chat. You yeah, where are you at? What do you want to hear about? Yeah, do absolutely. you know of a haunted place in your state that we can research? Send our DMs Send are it. Always open. Yes. Please. Oh, and you want to know what we can do? Like U.S. territories too, like Puerto Rico and. Oh hell yeah! Shit. Oh my hell yeah! Oh my god, bitch! Oh, North Ooh. Carolina. I actually yes, go Spencer. About North Carolina, right on my shelf right now. So I will be down to do that. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go one state down. Dude, we go Virginia, Deep. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude, Virginia too. I know Virginia too. And I mean, you know, it's no Virginia. wonder that there's so much weird shit happening, like in my house or like at my mom's house when I was growing up. Because like my mom lives two minutes down the street from where I live right now, <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. It's no surprise, and there's like weird stuff that happens at your parents' house too. Oh Same shit. yeah, mm -hmm. Dude, very scary. That. I literally, oh yeah, for like an example, I literally saw one of those stick figure. You know the like the stick figure one that you use to go ghost hunting. You like oh, shine yeah. it up, and it yeah. shows like a figure, like a green little figure. Mm -hmm. And I saw one in a tree, and <gasps> I didn't like that. I didn't see one anywhere. I just else got there. goosebumps. It was I so gross. Got I swear to God, I, I was like, "Bitch, my <sighs> parents' house, mm. yeah, super haunted." So, we get the whole like it's a lot of slavery, fucked up shit. Yeah. We well, and it's important to talk about too. Oh yes, absolutely. I'm close so to where I guess I'm going first. Are going to talk about eek? Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Go first. You want to do trigger warnings? Uh, yeah, I got to pull up the Google Doc so I can read the trigger warnings. And yeah, I totally get that, Spencer, because like I said, the place that I'm actually going to be talking about is within walking distance of my house. It's one of the most haunted places in the U.S. I'm so excited. I have never heard about this. It's a crazy backstory. And I actually know somebody 
that um, has a paranormal investigating team that has gone to the Weemsbot Museum a couple of times, and they said that they never experienced anything, but it's still mm. known as one of the most haunted places in the U.S., which is fucking crazy. All right, let's see. Where the fuck are they? Oh, this is the mist doc. <laughs> That's the last thing I opened. <laughs> okay, here we go. Trigger warnings of descriptive, supposedly true stories centering around gory real-life topics, paranormal encounters, and or anything surrounding extremely descriptive true narratives involving terror, murder, sexual interactions, mental health, anything violent or potentially cruel in nature is possibly triggering for you, then this podcast is not for you. You have been warned. You have. Um, also, I just want to say that Katie treated this episode like like how I treat true crime. So I'm really excited to hear what Katie has yeah. to say because she did a lot of research. Now, yes. I knew a, a good amount about the Ween Spot Museum and about the, um, the backstory. So I just found a really good article that explained – everything and i'm gonna give them credit obviously so this is from dcghosts.com mm -hmm. and uh it goes into the history of dumfries and the history of the house the history of the owners the families Ooh. and then it goes into the paranormal stuff so very in depth okay i'm gonna take a i mean this this article is just perfect and that's why Today's episode was really easy for me, not so much for Katie. But <laughs> the, oh, how the okay. turns have tabled. Oh, how the turns have tabled. Also, if you hear me like breathing, will you tell me? Because I realized the last two episodes I've been like <sighs> <laughs> the nervous breathing. <laughs> yes, I will tell I'm like, you. Do I do a shaky breathing? Okay, thank you. Okay. The Weems Bots Museum in Dumfries, Virginia. Dumfries is the oldest continuously chartered city in the United States. It's little more than a um, it's little more than a ghost town. A tiny spot off of suburbia, off of I ninety five, you could miss if you blinked. It's hard to imagine that it used to be the second largest and most important port city in America in the colonial area era. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it's a shadow of its former self, but the town is getting some attention again. The Weems Bots Museum is considered one of the most haunted places in the United States, after all. Hmm. So here's a little bit of history about Dumfries, or dumb fries, if you will. That's what you know. We all <laughs> That's joke what about. I used to call it. Yeah. <laughs> Once a custom house and warehouse were built in the town in 1731, they exploded in good shit. Dumfries became a boom town overnight, lasting from the late 1700s to early 1800s, and shipped out enough volume to rival ports like Boston. Ships came from all over the world, England, France, Scotland, Holland, even the West Indies brought in manufactured goods in exchange for wheat, lumber, and tobacco. The Scottish merchants who operated out of the city had it chartered in 1749, and it's been the longest continuously chartered city in the U.S. It was named after the homeland of the merchant who owned the land, and it was the first chartered town in Prince William County. Eventually, the goods came to an end when the shipping canal filled up with silt, blocking the way for ships to enter and leave the port. The rich and fertile farmlands around the town had been, had been stripped due to short-sighted farming practices. After that, it was only a matter of time for Dumfries to fade into obscurity. Ironically, it seems that the ghosts of the Weemsbot Museums, uh, Weemsbots Museum, might be bringing some life back to this town. And this is the history of the Weemsbots House. Reverend Mason Locke Weems came to Dumfries for a, a change of pace. Barely making any money at his last church, he decided to become a writer. He purchased the old warehouse and former church uh, poorhouse. Then he ended up creating a great legacy for himself with his biographies of important men. His personal hero was George Washington, but he also wrote biographies for Francis Swamp Fox Marion and even Benjamin Franklin. What made his books unique were the 
quote, creative liberties he took with the lives of these celebrities. He was the one who infamously created the myth of George Washington cutting down the cherry tree. Oh my God. Historians know that he embellished and made up stories for his heroes, but they look past these embellishments because they simply made the founding fathers that uh, that more interesting. These could be considered tall tales like Paul Bunyan and his blue ox babe. The second owner of the house was a celebrated defense lawyer, Benjamin Botts. He was famous because of his part on the defense team of Vice President Aaron Burr's treason trial. Botts died in the Richmond Theater fire of 1911. Mm. And this section of the article is called A Life of Suffering at Weems Botts House. <clears throat> Richard Merchant bought the house for his wife and two daughters in 1869. He lived there with his wife, Annie, and his two daughters, Violet and, and uh, I'm going to say Ma. May oh god i don't know how to say this name because it's spelled mammy but i'm pretty sure that that's oh. an offensive term uh -huh. so it's m-a-m-i-e so how would you okay. say it but i don't want to be like mommy i would too i don't know i would yeah i would think it was the other way too i'm going uh, to we'll assume that her, right <laughs> or like i mean M i'm going to assume that her name is mammy but i'll just okay uh yeah, maybe I'll just say M because I, I don't want to okay. offend anybody. I, I, that is her name, but I'm not I'm not sure how, how it was pronounced. Yeah. That's a, yeah. So I'll just say um, so he lived there with his wife and Annie and two daughters, Violet and M. M, unfortunately, was ill with what historians now believe was epilepsy. Unfortunately, oh. this was not a good time for ep epilepsy victims. There mm. was no cure, no medicines for treatment, and many times they ended up in state hospitals or asylums because the seizures were seen as madness or even oh. demonic possession. Oh, like Sam, many that makes me uh, so mad. Connor I, has epilepsy. I know. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Anyway, to to continue. think that somebody like that has an illness or has a, a to say, a oh condition. my god, they're having a demonic break. That's horrible. I know god, it's terrible. God for modern it's medicine. It's already traumatizing it's enough to experience somebody going through a seizure and then to be like, yes, That's the devil. Like mm -hmm. what? Just throw him in a psych ward. Crazy. I know. Like many others, M was locked in her room, unable to go outside or leave the house for fear of having a seizure in public. Oh God. For 23 years, she suffered in that room until a suspected seizure killed her. Her father wow. died before her, so her mother Annie was now alone in the house. Violet had moved away and was setting up a house with her fiance when her mother demanded that she return to care for her. Because her husband had died and her other da daughter had died too. So the mom was all alone. Violet was forced to leave the life that she had barely started to come back home to care for Annie. Neighbors said that you could see her pacing around the house at night and loud sobs could be heard. If Violet thought her mother might move on soon, she was tragically mistaken. Annie lived for another 46 years and died in 1952. Violet oh moved God. between the house and a nursing home, living until 1967. So she only lived 15 years after her mom died and she gave up everything. Mm. Her fiance, the person that she fell in love with, the person that she wanted to create a life with, she left that to go take care of her mom, God. thinking, okay, well, my mom might only have a couple more years left and I can wait, you know, three to That's five horrible. years. And her and her mom only, you know, lived for another almost 50 years. House really is like a nightmarish. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's believed that the haunting in the house can be attributed to these suffering sisters. M was treated like a dirty little secret and Violet lost her own lifetime of happiness to caring for her mother. If ghosts are the, uh, are the spirits of those with unfinished business or awful lives, it makes sense that even death can't seem to free them. Mm. Jesus. And here's some information about the paranormal experiences at this museum. The house was set to be demolished. 
but Dumfries saved the house for its historic value. It was bought and renovated to, uh, to be made into the Weems Bots Museum, which opened in 1976. During the renovation, strange things started to happen. Renovations oftentimes mm. seem to stir up spirits. They may not know that they are dead and suddenly strangers are moving in and changing everything. Mm -hmm. Case in point, a doorway was plastered over and a bookshelf was installed. But the books would fly off of the shelves, not fall off. They were thrown with great force across the room. It was oh determined God. that the ghost doesn't want the doorway blocked. Once the shelf was moved and the doorway was reopened, the books didn't move anymore. Sounds can be heard from the upstairs where M lived. Loud female screams erupt from nowhere and oh. footsteps pace around. Curtains would flutter with no windows open. A picture would come off the wall and be found either on the floor or propped up in a chair. One window in Violet's bedroom will open and close itself at all hours of the day and night. Volunteers will find the window open at the beginning of their shift when it was closed the previous night. One time, a high school student visitor was talking to the uh, docent when the window opened next to her. The docent told her that it was, quote, just the ghost saying hi. When they looked back later in the conversation, the window was closed again. There's a oh small doll... There's a small doll oh God. that would constantly move around the room. It would move overnight so frequently that a docent asked out loud, can you please leave the doll alone? And the doll oh has God. not moved since then. Oh, my God. There was a creepy story in what was uh, M's room. A Marine Scout leader and his troop of Boy Scouts were touring the upstairs when they stepped into her old room. As the docent was giving her a talk, she noticed the man was reacting badly to something unseen in the corner behind her. He was sweating. His face was pale. His eyes were wide in terror. Quote, she, she needs her rocking chair. He managed to stutter out before bolting out of the house. The docent had to lead the man's troop back outside. So a big group of kids oh my God. had to leave the kid, uh, lead the kids outside. And he refused to enter the re-enter the house. Later on, hmm. the manager reached out to a living family member who confirmed that M would rock in her rocking chair for hours, looking outside to the world that she could never visit. Oh my God. And now today, most of the time, Ghosts are hard to catch on camera or catch their audio as EVPs. However, it seems that the ghosts of the Weems Bots Museum are usually happy to oblige, especially when cameras are rolling. The TV series Dead Files did a whole episode on the museum called Widow's Revenge, Dumfries, Virginia. And the Biography mm. Channel had a spot on my ghost story talking about the spirits there. So there's two shows that there has been uh, an episode done on for this. At first, the tours given at the museum would not mention the strange things that happened there unless a guest act asked directly or they saw something. However, the TV shows seem to help revitalize interest in the museum and the town around it. Now, every October, Historic Dumfries holds a ghost lock-in, encouraging people to oh stay the God. night. Apparently, nobody has managed to stay past midnight. Do you think that you could? Yes. <laughs> I would. Thank you for know, asking. I've lived here my whole life, and I've never been there. Oh, we should go together. We should Aww. go. Best friends forever. As, as far as I know, that they're really open to, like, ghost uh, – for, like, investigators and stuff. Like, you could just oh, be like, hey, can, can we come investigate? And I'll be like, yeah. As far as I know. I don't know about I'm after COVID. Ghosts. Mm, that's true. Really sad story. That's horrible. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Especially, and I'm about to get really deep. As someone that depression, I know what it's like to be in a room where you feel like you're trapped. You know, you feel like the four walls are closing in on you. Can you oh, imagine yep. that for, what did you say, 27 years? 23 years. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Not being able to leave the house for t over and then to die, years. not knowing your full potential your whole life, you know, because she had to give up her whole life oh essentially. Well, and like her mother, you know, seizures are so scary in general. I've I've 
you know, like I've experienced people having seizures yes. around me. Same. It's terrifying mm-hmm. for people to it's like horrible. experience that from the outside, but also for the person who's dealing with the epilepsy or dealing with the seizure yes. activity to begin yes. with. It mm-hmm. seems terrifying because it's like, I know. I know you're not really conscious and most people don't know what's going on, but it's like, I feel like there has to be part of the brain where it's like, there's something going on up here. Like I'm not just completely on, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't have it, but I feel I like don't there- either. I would have to ask Connor. I would love to know, you know, I just, what a, what a horrible thing, especially back then. I just, I can't believe. I, and then at the same time, you're like, well, duh. Yeah. They didn't know what to do. They were probably just like, oh my God, someone's convulsing on the ground. Let's put them in the psych ward or let's mm. just call it a demonic possession because God is, you know, lobotomy. That was, that was a running man. Yeah. Or lobotomy. Oh my God. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. I don't know. Terrifying. Well, that was scary. We're going to have to go <laughs> down there. Yeah. Let's go. Let's I'll call it. them and I'll, I'll freaking be like, hey, Wait, can hey, I come stay? Equals is on the way. Can we come stay? <laughs> Yeah, how many of you guys would like to see that? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> Question mark. All right, are you ready for? I'm after? really excited. Yeah, I'm gonna hear. I love that you're excited because I, I'm, I'll, I'll be the first to admit I didn't really know a lot about him. I knew of him. I know he's a poet. I understand. I know of like his works and stuff. Scarier. Yeah. Well, phew, he's amazing. His story is crazy. So I'm going to start reading what my notes say to you because I'm just, we're just going to go through this. So he was known for his writing due to his brevity, musicality, and psychological depth. Allegory, which is an extended metaphor in which the characters, places, and objects in a narrative carry figurative meaning, alliteration, Mm -hmm. repetition, and rhyme. Writing was based on feeling and emotion rather than rationality and fact. It was gothic romanticism. Beautiful. Edgar Allan Poe was born January 19th, so he's a Capricorn, uh, in 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts. Although both parents died before he was four, uh, he was then adopted by John Allen and his wife. They were a tobacco farmer farmer, farmer in Richmond, Mm -hmm. and that's why Allen was added to Poe's name, Uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, So he grew up in Virginia, right here in Richmond. I don't know why he I didn't actually, know that. I didn't know that either. And you know, and like I was, like, I was down in Richmond and there's the Edgar Allan Poe Museum. And I was like, I, you know, what I, was telling Danny, I was like, yeah, I, I didn't have any idea that Edgar Allan Poe was from here. And he was like, why do you think that the Baltimore Ravens are called the Ravens? And I was like, someone else said that to me <laughs> the other day. Oh my I, was God. Like, yeah, I was watching like BuzzFeed Unsolved and they were like, yeah, that's why they're named after the Raven or the, you know, the Raven doth quote the Raven. And I was like, what? I had no idea. Sorry. I'm not but, trying um, to interrupt you, but like I did, I genuinely didn't know. No, this. Like, I have no idea. I, dude, <laughs> I was just, just I'm, this makes me a little dumb. Like, dumb. You're like, I didn't know this. I'm like, <laughs> I bitch call me dumb. I don't know. I just didn't know this shit. I was amazed to hear. And I feel so lucky that he's from our state. Yeah. Um, his guardian, John Allen and him had a very tumultuous relationship. Uh, they ran into financial troubles and troubles and could no longer keep Poe in school. Uh, he went to the school of University of Virginia. So he was up in Charlottesville. You An article right. posted on notablebiographies.com reads, as Edgar entered his teenage years, however, bad feelings developed between him and John Allen. Allen disproved of Edgar's ambition to become a writer, thought he was ungrateful, and seems to have decided to cut Poe out of his will. Wow. When in 1826, Poe entered the newly opened University of Virginia, he had so little money that he turned to gambling in an attempt to make money. In oh. eight months, he lost $2,000. And back then, that's a, that's fucking a lot, lot of money. Yes. Allen's refusal to help him led to a final break between the two. And in March of 1827, Poe went out on his own. Apparently, and this is a rumor, I don't know if this is made up, but I thought I would add it in. Apparently, it got so bad at one point with money that he's rumored to have lit his own furniture on fire to keep him warm on winter nights. Oh, my I guess God. He couldn't afford wood. That sounds like know. the movie Rent. <laughs> have you? Yes. Haven't, you haven't seen Rent. Have no, you? but I know 
5,025. <laughs> Fuck you, that, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do all the musicals right now. I swear <laughs> to God. So apparently after this, he started to get really depressed. He turned to alcohol, more gambling. And also to add insult to injury, after returning home from college, he came home to see that his childhood sweetheart, Ella Mira, was engaged to another man. So yeah. he's like, bing, bang, boom. Coming home from college, can't be a, be an educated writer anymore. You know, I'm out of money. I'm down on my luck. My dad and I are not, well, not really his dad, but his adopted father was like, yeah. you know, they're not talking. And then he finds out that his, basically his childhood crush was getting married. That's so what he did after that was, he, I know, it was like, Sad. oh, wow, really down on his luck right now. But then he went to join the army. He actually became a sergeant major. He continued to write, though, while he was um, while he was stationed. Writing was still his true passion, as you could tell. He had nowhere to turn. So get this. He goes to back up to Baltimore, where he was when he was adopted at four or whatever, because his parents died. He saw that his like aunt and his cousin were there. So he like goes. They take him in. Okay. His cousin, Virginia, was 13. He was 27 or 28, I believe. Where is this and going? they got married. Ew. Yes, okay. secretly. It was a secret. I'm sure and it I was. was like, oh, scandalous. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Okay. I understand you being down bad, like, when you can't marry Not your child. Not that bad. But that doesn't mean go marry your cousin, you know? Your 13-year-old anyway. cousin. Yes. Yeah. And I know uh, the people yeah, yeah. are like, oh, you can't judge them because it was the times. I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, I can definitely <laughs> judge that. That's <laughs> disgusting. You stupid fuck. <laughs> anyway. It, it was the times, man. <laughs> it was the Sit times, out. man. Sit you know, down. You, you, got, you married 13-year-olds and had full-blown families with them before they're even 16. Like, that, Ugh, that makes gross. Sense. Gross. Gross gross but do we forgive him poll in the chat do we forgive i him don't forgive this? him for doing that i can acknowledge that like his poems and stuff i think it's great. gross it's i disgusting. think it's gross but i digress i was All like right. man poe you <laughs> do had we me forgive him no katie no we don't <laughs> do we i feel like Wendy Williams. do we forgive him <laughs> no <laughs> do we forgive onision no do we forgive poe for marrying his 13 year old cousin just pull no chat. <laughs> the answer y'all don't answer that if y'all put that in the don't chat, answer me if i see a yes in the chat i'm blocking you guys <laughs> no polling now all right poe began Sorry. editing for fame no 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 but poe began editing for a famous literary magazine he was an acclaimed critic and writer for his biting reviews this is a quote biting reviews and good poetry and short stories <laughs> then he marries his cousin virginia and he was confirmed 27 and 13 then he took her to new york new york where they sat they settled down into a house that is now famous because it was the house that he lived in while he wrote some of his more darker poetry mm. his more notable poetry all right so gothic is of or relating to a style of fiction characterized by the use of desolate or remote settings and a mac macabre mysterious or violent incidents romanticism though a literary artistic and philosophical movement originating in the 18th century characterized chiefly by a reaction against neoclassism an mm -hmm. emphasis on the imagination and emotions. That's a big thing. Okay, so bitch, slam I got them bad together. news. <laughs> I got bad news, okay? You're uh -oh. not going to like this. 1847, Virginia's dead. She died of tuberculosis. Oh, and he consumption. loses it. Isn't that, he isn't that what they called it? it? Consumption? What? Consumption they used to, for tuberculosis. No, they used what to is tuberculosis they, before they had like a name for it. Like they would say died of consumption. I think that's the name, but it was tuberculosis. But they called it like consumption. Oh, or okay. It says a disease caused by germs that are spread from person to person through the air. <gasps> 
that seems oh, so it was an oh epidemic. It was an epidemic back then. Oh. It was like COVID. Well, she's gone and he How lost she? his mind. Uh, it looks, when did they get married? Like in her 30s? I want to say, yeah, probably early 30s. Wow. Uh, I don't remember the year they got married, but it was 1847 when she died. Damn. Uh, and yeah, it was of tuberculosis. So, of course, he's going back to his old ways. He's distressed. Depressed. He's on the brink of a downward spiral. He gambled, drank. He had affairs. Because at this point, he was popping off in the writing world and girls knew who he was. Well, it wasn't so an he affair. Was his affairs. wife was dead. Yeah. Well, I don't know why I wrote affairs. <laughs> You know that the it was the documentary I was listening to. Like, do they had many affairs? But you're right. He's he's a single encounters. man. He had, encounters. He had some encounters, and uh, everything just fell apart. Yeah. This is when his scary. I wrote scary as shit was written during this time. <laughs> Annabelle Lee, The Bells, which I want to read you. The Bells. Yeah, read it. Give me a second. Let's read this. Okay, I'm excited. Okay. This is where is it? I clicked on de definition of bells. Oh, I'm, I'm just going to look it up. I'm not even going to yep. explain what happens too much. That's all right. <laughs> all right. Hear the sledges with the bells, silver bells. What a world of merriment their melody foretells. How they tinkle, tinkle, tinkle in the icy air of night. While the stars that oversprinkle all the heavens seem to twinkle with a crystalline delight keeping time, 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 and sort of a runic rhyme to the tintinnabulation that so musically wells from the bells, 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 from the jingling and the tinkling of the bells. Hear the mellow wedding bells, golden bells, what a world of happiness their harmony foretells. Through the balmy air of night, how they ring out their delight from the molten golden notes and all in tune what a liquid ditty floats to the turtle love that listens while she gloats on the moon oh from the sounding cells what a gush of euphony voluminously wells how it swells how it dwells on the future how it tells of the rapture that impels to the swinging and the ringing of the bells 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 of the bells 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 to the rhyming and charming of the bells um I'm going to stop here and explain for just a second what was going on. I can already Apparently understand. He's, okay, <laughs> like, good. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the bells that would ring when him and another woman that was taking care of Virginia in her ailment, uh, the bells would ring. So he's writing this about the bells. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hear the loud alarm bells, brazen bells, what a terror now their turbulency tells. In the startled ear of night, how they scream out their affright, too much horrified to speak. They can only shriek, shriek out of tune. In a clamorous appealing to the mercy of the fire, in a mad exultation with the death and frantic fire leaping higher 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 with a desperate desire and a resolute endeavor now to sit or never by the side of the pale face moon oh the bells 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 what a terror their uh, what a tale their terror tells of despair how they clang clash and roar what a horror they outpour on the bosom of the palpitating air yet the ear it fully knows by the twanging and the clanging how the dang how the danger ebbs and flows, yet the ear distinctly tells in the jangling and the wrangling how the danger sinks and swells by the sinking or the swelling in the anger of the bells of the bells of the bells, 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 in the clamor and the clangor of the bells. Last one. Hear the tolling of the bells, iron bells, what a world of solemn thought their monody compels mm. in the silence of the night, how we shiver with affright at the melancholy menace of their tone. For every sound that floats from the rust within their throats is a groan. And the people, ah, the people, that they dwell up in the steeple all alone. And who tolling, tolling, tolling in that muffled monotone feel a glory and so rolling on the human heart a stone. They are neither man nor woman. They are neither brute nor human. They are ghouls. And their king it is who tolls. And he rolls, 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 rolls. 
a pain from the bells and his merry bosom swells with the pain of the bells and he dances and he yells, keeping time, time, time and sort of a runic rhyme to the pain of the bells, of the bells keeping time and sort of a runic rhyme to the throbbing of the bells, of the bells, bells, to the sobbing of the bells keeping time as he nails, nails, nails in a happy runic rhyme to the rolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the tolling of the bells, of the bells, 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 to the moaning and the groaning of the bells, the end. <laughs> oh my God. That was yes, actually really very powerful. Very depressing. Depressing, well, sad. You can tell it came straight from his chest. Oh, oh yeah. It's like you you hear how in the beginning he's talking about wedding bells. You, at the very beginning, mm -hmm. he's talking about bells of like joy and, and bells of happiness. And then he's mm -hmm. talking about wedding bells and jingle bells mm -hmm. and all of the happiness that comes with it. And then your wife gets sick. And it completely shifts and it goes to sad and then it goes to depressed mm -hmm. and then it goes to literally hell's bells. Yeah. That's really oh powerful. Wasn't that's that really, really poem. powerful. He is amazing. Um, oh. Yeah. I was like, I got to at least read one of them. That one so was really good. Amazing. Oh my God. That was really yeah. powerful. And <laughs> I'm going to go back and I'm going to read I love that. him. <clears throat> a dream within a dream was another one that he wrote in El Dorado. Um, and the bells and Annabelle Lee was the other two, so you can check those out too. They were very good. The so Raven is one Virginia. of those. Like, yes, the Raven one. is the biggest one. I never found out when he wrote that one, but this at that time he was writing all these. Really My dad songs. had it on vinyl. I'm pretty sure. Ooh, like he had a reading of the Raven on vinyl. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, so after this, after Virginia passed, he returned mm -hmm. back to Virginia, Richmond. He met the girl that he had a crush on. Her husband died. Bing, bang, oh. boom. From Let's tuberculosis too? Elmira. No, I don't know. I didn't check. <laughs> but her fiance is out of the picture or her husband at the time. I'm sorry. So mm. boom. He, he comes back to Richmond. just died. And he meets a childhood lover again. And he's like, let's get married. And she's like, yes. Oh my God. Okay. Boom. Seven days later, not eight days later, he's dead. He's in the <gasps> gutter outside of the horse you came in on, which is the name of his favorite watering hole, which is a bar. He loved that place. He's in the gutter, not only dead, but also wearing, he wasn't dead. He was actually just convulsing and was like, shivering but as they took him to the hospital i believe he died three days later yeah um but they, he was wearing someone else's clothes what the fuck no one knows what and it was very like disheveled clothes like clothes that you would see on someone that is homeless or lives out in the streets or like and he was like wearing somebody beat him up and robbed him for his clothes and that's then put how their we're clothes gonna get into on that him? i can't wait i, I can't this part okay. is you're gonna love this okay so he mysteriously vanished dead in a gutter outside of a bar and 10 days later uh he died in the hospital found in not his own clothes favorite watering hole or bar was the horse she came in on so I'm, I'm just giving you all these facts hospital stay for four days and then death his death is still mysterious and that's the name of this article that i'm about to read you and i'm actually going to share my screen so you can see with me i'm gonna go pee really quick but i'm like i'm go so pee -pee. interested in this i'm i, I feel like i'm getting weird. told true crime i know isn't this good i feel i feel excited i love it guys right i'm gonna read the chat for a little bit oh i'm vicky's here hi i'm vicky if you guys are listening later on um during our spotify or apple podcasts and you want to join our lives Come on Wednesdays. It's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern over on our YouTube. We also have a Facebook group that we run. Uh, for all of you guys in the chat, I want you to know this especially. If you have Facebook, jump on over to our Facebook page, which is Two Ghouls Podcast, and you should be able to scroll down just a touch and find our group. It should be Ghoul Friends. That's what we've named it. And I also put in parentheses a Two Ghouls Podcast group. So there's like no confusion um let's see what else should i tell you about ah yes wherever you listen whether that be on apple spotify i don't think that you can do this on youtube you can do it on facebook um wherever you listen give us a give us a review what do you think about us do you like us do you not like us it's okay you can you can 
speak the truth. You can tell us what you think. But we want to know. Go go ahead and send in your reviews on Apple and Spotify. And now Sam is back. And I'm ready to tell you about Edgar Allan Poe's death. <laughs> okay. okay. So this article comes with <clears throat> theories about why he's dead. And I'm going to okay. read to you every single one. I'm going to share my screen here. Ooh, okay. Okay. The still mysterious death of Edgar Allan Poe. Was the famous author killed from a beating, from carbon monoxide poisoning, from alcohol withdrawal? Here are the top nine theories, and this is by Natasha Geeling. It was raining in Baltimore on October 3rd, 1849, but that didn't stop Joseph W. Walker, a compositor for the Baltimore Sun, from heading out to Gunner's Hall, a public house bustling with activity. It was election day, and Gunner's Hall served as a pop-up polling location for the fourth ward polls. When Walker arrived at Gunner's Hall, he found a man, delirious and dressed in shabby secondhand clothes, lying in the gutter. The man was semi-conscious and unable to move, but as Walker approached him, he discovered something unexpected. The man was Edgar Allan Poe. Worried about the health of the mm. adult poet, Walker stopped and asked Poe if he had any acquaintances in Baltimore who might be able to help him. Poe gave Walker the name of Joseph E. Snodgrass, a magazine editor with some medical training. Immediately, Walker wrote Snodgrass a letter asking for help. Dear sir, there is a gentleman rather than the worser fear at Ryan's fourth word polls who goes under the con con cognomen of Edgar Allan Poe uh, and who appears in great distress and he says he is acquainted with you. He is in need of immediate assistance. Yours in haste, you know. On September 27th, almost a week earlier, Poe had left Richmond, Virginia, bound for Philadelphia to edit a poems for uh, Marguerite St. Marguerite. Leon, <laughs> Marguerite Leon Loud, a mi minor figure in American poetry at the time. When Walker found Poe in a delirious disarray outside of the polling place, it was the first anyone had heard or seen of the poet since his departure from Richmond. Poe never made it to Philadelphia to attend to his editing, biz editing business, nor did he ever make it back to New York where he had been living. To escort his aunt back to Richmond for his impending wedding, Poe was never to leave Baltimore where he launched his career in the early 19th century again. And in the four days between Walker finding Poe outside the public house and Poe's death on October 7th, he never regained enough consciousness to explain how he had come to be found in soiled mm. clothes, not his own, incoherent on the streets. Instead, Poe spent his final days wavering between fits of delirium, gripped by visual hallucinations, mm. and the night before his death, according to his attending physician, John J. Moran, Poe repeatedly called for Reynolds, a figure to this day who remains a mystery. Who's that? Weird. <laughs> Right? I had to tell you. Okay. <laughs> Poe's death shrouded in mystery seems ripped directly from the pages of one of his own works. Yes. He has spent years crafting a careful image of a man inspired by adventure and fascinated with enigmas. A poet, a detective, an author, a world traveler who fought in the Greek War of Independence and was held prisoner in Russia. But though his death certificate listed the cause of death as frentitis phrenitis or swelling of the brain the mysterious circumstances surrounding his death have led many to speculate about the true cause of poe's demise maybe because it's fitting that since he invented the detective story says Semter, curator of the poe museum in richmond he left us with a real life mystery or maybe Someone he just thinks, killed himself maybe and no. wanted it to be a mystery I bet you, I bet you he wanted it to be a mystery. I bet you he was like, oh, I'm feeling kind of sick. I need to be mysterious, though. <laughs> Sorry, Edgar. I don't, I don't know. I don't believe it. I don't know. In I, 18, just, I guess. I, me either. In 1867, one of the first theories to deviate from either phrenitis or alcohol was published by biographer E. Oak Smith in her article, quote, Autobiographic Notes, Edgar Allan Poe. They said, at the instigation of a woman, Smith writes, who considered herself injured by him, he was cruelly beaten blow upon blow by a ruffian who knew of no better mode of avenging supposed injuries. It is well known that a brain fever followed. Other accounts, oops, other accounts also mention ruffians who had seen, who had beaten Post senseless before his death. 
Eugene Didier wrote in his 1872 article, The Grave of Poe, that while in Baltimore, Poe ran into some friends from West Point, which is his uh, military days, who prevailed him upon him to wait a minute, who prevailed upon him to join them for drinks. Poe, mm. unable to handle liquor, became madly drunk after a single glass of champagne, after which he left his friends to wander the streets in his drunken state. He was robbed and beaten by ruffians and left insensible in the streets all night. Hmm. That doesn't explain his clothes, though. No. You know? Let's see. Hmm. Cooping. Others believe that Poe fell victim to practice known as cooping, a method of voter fraud practiced by gangs in the 19th. Oh, listen to this. The 19th voter century fraud. where an unsuspecting victim would be kidnapped disguise and then forced to vote for a specific candidate oh. multiple times under multiple disguised identities mm. voter fraud was extremely common in baltimore around the mid 1800s and the polling site where walker found the disheveled poe was a known place that coopers brought their victims the fact that poe was found delirious on election day then is no coincidence hmm. and that, that would explain the clothes yeah that does explain them. You know, and maybe they drugged him to maybe to like get him to comply. They, like, gave him his alcohol to yeah. I don't know. Huh? That Over the years, the cooping that one. I think I believe in this one. I think that's convincing. This one is close enough for me. Over the years, the cooping theory has come to be one of the more widely accepted explanations for Poe's strange demeanor before his death. Before Prohibition, voters were given alcohol after voting as sort of a reward. Had Poe been forced to vote multiple times in a cooping scheme, oh my God. that might explain his semi-conscious ragged state. Oh my God, That's yeah. funny. Yeah, it's like, you, like get a, you get a glass of champagne after you vote. It's like, yeah. It's like, hi, my name's John. Hi, my name's Bill. Hi, my name's <laughs> Around the late 1870s, Poe's biographer, uh, Biographer J.H. Ingram received several letters that blamed Poe's death on a coping scheme. A letter from William Hand Brown, a member of the faculty at Johns Hopkins University, explains the general belief here is that Poe was seized by one of these gangs, his death happening just at election time. An election for sheriff took place on October 4th, cooped, stupefied with liquor, dragged out and voted, and then turned adrift to die. That makes the most That's sense. That's really me. convincing. I agree. Hey, how good are we going? Doing good on time? I can't see. Yeah, the time. I probably got like ten. It says fifty-three minutes, uh, but I probably got okay. about ten minutes left for myself. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to speed through these. It could be alcohol, though the theory that Poe's drinking led to his death fails to explain his five-day disappearance or his secondhand clothes on October 3rd. Yeah. It was nonetheless a popular theory propagated by Snodgrass after Poe's death. Snodgrass, a member of the temperance movement, which if you guys remember, that was when all everyone was trying to stop you to drink alcohol, like nobody could drink alcohol at all, period. Mm -hmm. No. Gave lectures across the country blaming Poe's death on binge drinking because he was a drunk. Modern science, however, has thrown a wrench into Snodgrass's talking points. Samples of Poe's hair from after his death show low levels of lead, explains Sumter, which is an indication that Poe remained faithful to his vow of sobriety up until his demise. Hmm. That's mm. interesting that they were able to find that out back then. I agree. Mm. I'm I curious haven't read this that, entirely, but... but these have got me. Oh, rabies. Oh, oh we talked about this on an upcoming Ugg Mug we... Monday episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. We sure did. I think that's this one coming up on Monday. Check us out, guys. I think there's uh, one. It could be heads heavy. in two weeks. Oh, wait, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Two weeks. Two weeks from now. Every I Monday. think. All right. Heavy could be heavy metal poisoning. While hmm. Danae's test didn't reveal levels of heavy metal consistent with carbon monoxide poisoning, the test did reveal elevated levels of mercury in Poe's oh. system months before his death. According to Semter, Poe's mercury levels were most likely elevated as a result of the cholera epidemic he'd been exposed to in July of 1849 while in Philadelphia. That's interesting. It, says, it also explains his hallucinations and delirium. However, the levels of mercury found in Poe's hair, even at their highest, are still 30 times below the level consistent with mercury poisoning. Could somebody mm. try to have drugged him with mercury? <gasps> Question Baby. mark? Rabies? I don't know. Okay. I'm going to skip ahead down. <laughs> A brain Let's tumor. See. 
a brain tumor, the flu, murder. 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 Judas, no. (laughs) Judas, Judas, no. no. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I'm just going to go ahead and read to you the paranormal encounters that people had with his ghost. Okay, yeah, tell me. Enjoy. All right. The first one comes from the RVA Poe Museum, and I'm going to read to you. It's a very short little thing. Built around 1754 as a private home, the, quote, little stone house, unquote, located a few blocks from Poe's boyhood home, has housed a collection of Poe's artifacts since the early 1900s. At about this time began the rumors of its hauntings. At least three ghosts are believed to reside or at least visit Mm. here including two blonde children thought to be belonging to the house's original owners and a shadowy figure thought to be Poe himself. Hmm. The children tend to show up in visitors' photos, and the man seems to be attached to some of the museum's items, such as Poe's walking stick and his wife's Virginia's hand mirror. He has also been seen in the hallways and in the garden or captured in photographs behind a tour group as if listening to the guide. One interesting story involves a shipment of Poe bobblehead figures that came in for the gift shop. Employees arrived to find that they had been unpacked and lined up on the shelves without the burglar alarm ever having been. Oh, my God. Okay, that's weird. That's weird. All right. The next one. And I like this one. It comes from the horse you came in on. Someone did a uh, like one of those like local TV news channels. They like interviewed this guy that's working there. And they said, you don't have to go far to experience the supernatural. There are several places in (laughs) Fells Point in Baltimore. This is like Baltimore's local TV. Fells Point that are reportedly haunted, including the horse you came in on, the bar. Oh, where'd it go? It's gone. Where the unexplained (laughs) can be part of everyday experience, not just on Halloween. Skipping around. The bar and restaurant in Fells Point dates back to 1775 it's built with the tin ceiling that predates electricity and has some of the original brick there's still an entryway to the speakeasy which was open during prohibition it's also the last place edgar Allan poe was seen alive that's great let's see he was seen here i know me too (laughs) 244 year old bar has been the subject of many a ghost story nationwide the guy said, there's a lot of people who don't want to be in here by themselves if they're closing the bar back or something like that. And he said, mm-hmm. there's a lot of lights turning on, turning off, TVs turning on, turning off. I walk behind the bar and a glass is just sitting on the bar and it just shatters out of nowhere. What I turned heck? around to the guy who was behind me. His eyes were big and he goes, I was working last night and the same exact thing happened in the exact same spot. Ooh. I can't. I was here one morning opening and I was the only person in here. I had my head down doing something behind the rail and I was so convinced that somebody walked by. I said, you can't be in here. We're not open yet. I looked up and there was nothing. Mm. A desk drawer is said to have opened on its own in the fourth floor and no one wants to be left alone in the attic. If that door is cracked, cracked at all, the hair on the back of your neck is way up. Beyond the fact that we have live music open to close seven days a week we have a great menu staff is friendly (laughs) ambiance come down and check it out (laughs) if you're into haunted stories it just adds to it that i guess edgar Allan poe had his last drink here Mm, spooky i want to go i'm scared (laughs) i haven't been reading the chat what's going on in the chat not there's a movie on netflix where edgar Allan poe is the character pale blue eye? Oh, I will have to check that out. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, there we go. I Katie, you did so everyone. good. Thank you. I'm so I proud of you. Good. I like this episode. I had a good Me time. Me too. Thank you. I was so nervy, but I chilled yeah. out today. I painted. I just cooled myself off. You did so Shut good. I'm so proud of mind. you. Thank you. And that was Thank really you. enjoyable. I feel like I learned right? a whole lot. I feel like I just taught myself something. I love this job. I feel like we can just <laughs> research whatever the fuck we want. It just has to be a little bit scary. And yeah. it, it's just like school again. <laughs> but now it's like, we got places to go, fun. bitch. Because these are yeah. here. So like, mm-hmm. let's go. I know, beach. Let's go. Mm. <laughs> 
Anyways, do we have anything to announce? I don't or... think so. We've got merch oh, you right sh- now. You want to show them our merch? Come yeah, here, yeah, mosquito. Yeah. Come here, mosquito. Oh, my God. I had a mosquito. I was literally giving the little babies a bath today, and there was a mosquito in my bathroom. And I was like, what oh, the I hell? It. We went and outside, like, and they're all there. Yep. Like, it never like, – like, never happened. <laughs> it's literally February. But it, it's like Go 60 degrees away. outside. Y'all are all supposed <laughs> all to be born. dead. Fuck off. <laughs> They're going to die in like two days. I'm going to – So you can that. go to twoghouls.com and up here in the right-hand corner, you can click on merchandise. And when you do that, you'll <gasps> see that we have the Sweetheart collection and there's a T-shirt, a crop hoodie, a regular hoodie. And like, look at how cute these are. Cute. Where the little hearts it says "to die for," "choke me till death," choke and then it says two ghouls podcast" with the blood podcast. splatter. And it comes in black and pink. The crop top yes. comes in a light pink. It's cute as fuck. I, I have it. this color, one. light pink, in one of our old hoodies, yes. and it's really cute. Oh, tell them about how cozy it is on the inside. It's, it's not literally light pink so soft. It, it feels is. like a blanket on the inside. It's it so does. comfortable. My favorite hoodie. And then we've yeah. got the Will You Be My Ghoul Friend collection. So this is the front. Yes. Just the two ghouls podcast and there's me and there's Katie. And then on the back it says, Will You Be My <laughs> Ghoul Friend? My like, come on, how cute. And That's look, and then it's in pink. And it's Precious. limited edition. You can only get it around uh, – Oh, that's Valerie. what I needed to announce. Valerie. Valerie. I'm so excited. I'm going to have balloons. I have heart-shaped balloons. I popped one in my face the other day, and my <laughs> face hurts so bad because <laughs> I was going to do a little drawing on it. But anyway, I'm going to put balloons back here. I'm going to get some streamers. Like It's going to be a good time. We're going to sit yeah. down. We're going to talk about dating horror stories and have oh, some yeah. Mad Libs maybe. I'll Which do some Mad Libs. You know what, you guys? And Here's your assignment for the week. <laughs> yes. Go watch – Last year's episode of Halloween. So good. Danny wrote us Mad Libs so that we funny. filled out, which were fucking hilarious. And yes. then we did, we, I think we did like love horror stories that episode. I, I think, think we did too. Like, relationship it was so long stories. ago. We were babies. I know. I remember. But that's going to be exciting. I gotta go to That's gonna be exciting. So come join us next week at 6 30 p.m. Eastern. I hope you're here on our YouTube. Uh, Remember to leave us a review wherever you listen. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, twoghouls.com, twoghoulspodcast.com. Come join our Facebook group that I told you about earlier today, Ghoul Friends. You'll find it on our Facebook page. Email Email us us your creepy stories. Eh? (laughs) Eh? Eh? We we prefer email, but if you want to DM us, you always can. You know, it's always open. And That's come listen to us on Monday on our audio oh, only yes. platforms come for our short Monday. episodes of Ugmunk Mondays. Though we recorded two of those today, and they're good. Yeah. They're so good. I'll be on the you guys are gonna like. All right, that's it. Thanks for joining. I think Thanks that's for everything. joining, guys. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. See you later. Bye.